The natural dyeing of textiles is an extremely easy and accessible way to transform that boring white tea into a landscape of vibrant natural hues. It's really quite easy to do at home, and there are tons of household items you can use in the process. We recently visited the Brooklyn Textile Arts Center to get a demo on how to do it, and we'll also explain some of the basic chemistry that's going on with the process along the way. I'm Sahara Johnson. I am an intern at Textile Art Center in Brooklyn. Um, right now we're doing a demonstration on natural dyeing. The process of this is taking um, natural things from the earth, like fruits and vegetables, um, different roots, et cetera, et cetera, and taking the color from them and translating them into a fiber. So right here I have silk that is being wetted. Um, when you are doing natural dyeing, you never want to directly put in a dry fiber into the dye bath. Um, it doesn't translate the color as well. So right here, I am wetting it. So right here is red cabbage. It's one of my favorite things to dye with. It's really pH sensitive, so it changes color really readily. And right here is cochineal, which is actually not a plant. It's a little bug found on cacti. Yeah, and it's one of the most ancient forms of red. Um, it's really, really vibrant, you'll see in a bit, so. <laughs> With these two natural dyes, red cabbage and cochineal, there's one very big difference in how they work. Cabbage is what is called the substantive dye. It contains a pigment called an anthocyanin, which is water soluble. This means that the pigment molecule can directly bond to a natural fiber on its own. Cochineal, on the other hand, is known as an adjective dye. Adjective dyes require something to stop the dye from washing out of a fiber. Cochineal is an anthraquinone dye, which is a red dye that requires a bonding material called a mordant. The mordanting process is when fibers are treated with a metal salt solution such as aluminum, chromium, copper, iron, or tin salts, creating a lasting bond between the dye and the fiber. The mordant basically allows the dye molecules to lock tightly with the fibers. Sahara, in this case, has used a substance called alum for her mordant in the cochineal dye. This is a substance that's more commonly used in the kitchen for pickling. Say I wanted to get a lavender color rather than like a deep, like royal purple. I wouldn't necessarily leave this in for very long. Um, just put the whole thing in. <laughs> and then I'll do the cochineal in this one. As we just learned, red cabbage is an anthocyanin dye. What's interesting about the color of anthocyanin pigment is that its pH directly affects the range of its color. By introducing an acid to this pigment, anthocyanins will turn red. By introducing a base, it will turn more of a bluish green color. At home, you can add lemon juice to the dye as an acid, or for a base, you can use baking soda. Keep this in mind while dyeing with red cabbage. You actually have a lot of colorful options. Right now, I am taking out my dye matter. Um, I'm pretty satisfied with the color that has been extracted, so um, just taking this out to stop that process from happening. So now I've strained out the cabbage from the dye bath. Um, there will be no more extraction happening, and now I'm going to add my fiber. I think we're about good with this. I'm pretty content with this pink and this lavender. So I'm gonna take it out of the dye bath and I'm going to rinse it with water and pH neutral soap. It's very important to remember that when rinsing your fiber of excess dye, you have to use pH neutral soap. Such soaps are very common and can be found at virtually every grocery store. Pro tip, most pH neutral soaps are completely clear. If your soap is not neutral, you will in fact alter the color of your fiber. Here is my lovely lavender silk. <laughs> Fun stuff. <laughs> and then we'll take out the cochineal. And yeah. It's very spotted, but I like it. <laughs> I think it's really beautiful. Now that you know the basics of natural dyes, you can try it out at home with tons of different natural products. One last thing to remember about these dyes is that they do change color over time and can slowly fade or go through slight variations in color. If you aren't happy with the color, you can always just go back in and dye it again. Also, you can try mixing dyes to produce a huge range of different colors. So this is a really, really easy process to do and that I encourage you all to try at home. A lot of household items like we did the turmeric and the red cabbage can 
be found at your local grocery store or anywhere. So yeah, everything is really accessible and definitely get to it. <laughs>